Let's get you all the updates uh, from the coronavirus outbreak in China. 490 people have now lost their lives due to the unknown virus. And more than 24,000 people have now been infected by the coronavirus. The sharp rise in death toll and infected cases comes majorly from the hardest hit province of Hubei. 65 deaths have been reported overnight, making this the biggest single-day jump in death toll in China alone since fatalities emerged last month. 97% of the infected cases in China are in Hubei province, while around 50 million people remain under lockdown. Harsher lockdowns have have uh, come to effect in other densely populated Chinese provinces in order to stop the spreading of the virus. Authorities in three Chinese cities in eastern Zhejiang province and one near Shanghai have limited the number of people allowed to go out of their homes. The districts in Wangzhou, including the area which is home to the tech giant Alibaba, has come under lockdown. Only one person per household is allowed to go outside every two days. The decision is affecting nearly three million people. Now, while the World Health Organization has hailed China's efforts to contain the virus, independent reports claim that the actual number of infected may be as high as 70,000 in the city of Wuhan. And the Chinese government is not reflecting the correct figures. That's what some independent studies have shown. Now, while the cause, precaution and treatment of the virus still remains unclear, reports suggest that the disease emerged in December in a Wuhan market that sold wild animals. And the rampantness is because many people have traveled within China and outside the country for the Lunar New Year holidays, especially spreading the disease in other parts of the world. So coronavirus is, has been declared already as a global health emergency. It has already got confirmed coronavirus cases in more than 24 nations in the world, including all G7 nations. Meanwhile... We are now going across live to China because uh, for more on this, we are being joined by our correspondent, Patrick, who's joining us live from Beijing. Patrick, coronavirus, uh, due to that, we've seen a largest single day jump in the number of deaths uh, in China. But uh, what about the economy? Uh, experts are predicting a loss of about $60 billion to Chinese economy in this quarter. Well, the reality is it's probably still too early to say what exactly the economic damage is going to be. We don't know at this point just how lethal the virus is and how long all this is going to last. But, you know, one prediction from the Economist Intelligence Unit has said that they think that the virus will come under control by the end of March. Uh, that's based on comparisons with the 2003 SARS outbreak. And it's also suggesting that it might mean uh, that China shaves off around uh, but somewhere between half a percent to one and a half percent of its uh, GDP. So that is uh, an indication of where it may uh, be headed from an economic perspective. We're already seeing damage to sectors like travel and tourism, the luxury sector, and uh, of course oil, market, oil prices have plunged dramatically as well. Absolutely, Patrick. We are also getting news that some international companies uh, like Apple and Disney may be shutting operations temporarily in China. Of course, this, this was the Lunar New Year holidays going on. I'm sure, like you mentioned, the travel has been affected. Have any other major international companies taken such a decision? Well, I think the other major bit of news really is how this is going to potentially affect supply chains. You mentioned Apple there. There may be an impact on Apple supply chains. But Hyundai, the Korean car maker, has also announced that it's going to temporarily shut down its factories. So, you know, this, this is something that's going to affect people economically in a lot of different ways. Of course, people not being able to travel around and do business, that's uh, something that's very difficult. But a lot of small businesses in particular are being affected recently retailers and anything uh, to do that you know to, to do with consumables that's all being hit hard some of the small business owners I've been speaking to here are worried that you know they're not getting any business at all mm. at the moment so they're still paying for a lot of overheads paying rent and the government has actually asked people landlords here specifically to uh, ease up on their tenants uh, particularly if they're running businesses so Perhaps that will help alleviate the situation. But as I say, there's still a lot of uncertainty about 
what impact this is going to have exactly. Absolutely, uh, Patrick. We'll have to wait and see what impact it has on the GDP. Experts predict a slowdown in China's GDP, certainly. But uh, China has imposed one of the largest lockdowns in human history, isn't it? Uh, millions of people are in lockdown as China attempts to contain the coronavirus outbreak. What's the latest you're hearing from the uh, Chinese government? Uh, what's the uh, latest figures you're hearing? What's the latest steps? Any other uh, city that has been impacted as far as this outbreak is concerned? Well, they've been going to extreme length to try and quarantine people. The latest we've been hearing is they've gone as far as locking people inside their homes to make sure that they uh, don't come out in Wuhan City, some people that are showing uh, symptoms. There are also examples, videos circulating of people being held down and being sprayed with disinfectant if they're not wearing masks out in public. That's how seriously they're, they're taking it. And it certainly uh, raises some questions about the human rights, uh, perhaps. But this is a, uh, an exceptional circumstance and perhaps uh, exceptional uh, things need to be done like that. The hospitals that are being purpose built uh, to house coronavirus patients uh, are now accepting patients. The first one uh, began accepting patients yesterday. The second one is meant to be complete today and it's been run entirely by uh, military medics, 1,400 of them. And the military has also taken over delivering supplies to uh, Hubei province. Of course, a lot of the roads have been uh, blockaded and, uh, and people aren't being allowed to drive as they please on highways and so on and so forth. So that's all under control by the military right now. But, you know, the, the figures are very worrying indeed. We're up to over 24,000 confirmed cases and 492 deaths, as you, as you say. But there's an indication that the numbers could be far higher than that still, right. certainly the number of infections, because Right now, what we're hearing is they don't even have enough kits to, to test people hmm. uh, to see whether or not they've actually contracted the virus. So uh, that number could be much, much higher. We could be looking at some of the figures that experts in Hong Kong have predict predicted, somewhere between 35,000, maybe up to 75,000. Absolutely. Absolutely. Patrick, uh, getting us the latest uh, from China, from Beijing. Patrick, we'd like to thank you for joining us on Beyond. Certainly the Chinese government faces a uphill task to contain the coronavirus. There's a shortage of face masks as well. In some areas, only one person per family is allowed to go out only every two days to get the essentials. So it's a big challenge that the Chinese government faces. Patrick, I'd like to thank you for joining us.